Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, and I welcome all of you back. So, previously, we discussed the bed of chaos, and how, actually, to be honest, the more I think about it, I don't even think, really, the OST is really worth, like, listening on repeat, because I made the point about it that, well, basically, if you, if you want to know what my opinions really are, it, the video is out there, so that's how it is. So that explains why we're just going straight back to Dark Souls 3, which is actually... And I love... Listen, I love the original Dark Souls, but Dark Souls 3 is a very dramatic uh, palate cleanser, even more if you're going straight into Dark Souls 2. And we cut to easily... Like, in terms of underrated boss fights, this is at least top 10 because I know a lot of people also rave about how great this fight is but I think there are some that are probably even better that don't get enough love but we will get to that so as far as uh and, and bear in mind the build-up to this fight is is terrific because after you defeat Dancer you uh, scale a ladder and you begin through the track of uh Lothric Castle and when I did this for the very first time and you first fight that sort of like little uh, cemetery place and you fight two really buffed uh, Knights of Lothric you are like almost immediately like beside yourself by the scale of power that a lot of Lothric's Knights now suddenly seem to have and you fight through uh, winged Knights you fight through just uh, uh, lackey hollows you fight through pusses of man, you defeat uh, two corpses of dragons, of undead dragons, you go through cathedral knights, and then you know you, you can even bash a few mimics uh, for good measure. You can collect a lot of really, really good rings that boost uh, your stamina, your strength, your health by a lot. And then you come across this very strange uh, place with this sort of... Uh, blood orange sort of like fog covering uh, what looks like a bridge and you half expect to go there and by the way these are there were sort of like these giant floating like I, I want to call them like the corpses of like moonlight butterflies just floating around the place and you're not really too sure if you've got to actually now fight one of these but when you actually get into uh, get past the fog gate itself and you see that it seems like you're just fighting an enormous uh, chunk of armor that's been manipulated by at least six or seven butterflies. It's another really big surprise because, well, as the title suggests, it is basically just a sentient piece of armor you fight. And, well, if this was like kept in reserve, you must have wondered who on earth would have been powerful enough to have possessed such a thing. And, well... It speaks to, because here's just what happens when you get into when get into the fight. Just check this out. It just begins and boom, you're like immediately into the action. Like, 
it, it is it's it's dramatic it's, it's and bear in mind you fight this thing on a on a bridge and dark souls has had many fights where you fight uh, bosses on bridges or in really narrow locations before but this is almost one of those cases where you fight uh, the, the armor and it's you're not even really that cons it's there to remind you that y that there's a quick way to lose in this but you're sort of just if you just stay somewhere near the middle and that's not even that easy because there's this giant fountain in the middle of the uh, the arena as well but you're just you're not really concerned about that because your biggest concern should be uh, in ca fighting the slate uh, the armor because one he has this incredibly um giant shield which basically prevents him from being poise broken so you kind of just have to fight him whenever he's not holding it up then his enormous battle axe, he just sort of... It's its more like a decapitator than a battle axe, but it does so much damage on one swing that it can just about knock you backwards. And he even has a couple of moves which are actually able to knock you across the arena, possibly even knock you off the edge. And he can also destroy parts of the bridge by just knocking down the walls on the side. So there's quite a bit to contend with. And then you get to the second stage. sudden it becomes even more dramatic and even just shifts because this is when uh the butterflies that actually control the armor start uh, uh becoming a part of the fight because they can shoot lasers and projectiles which makes positioning even harder because of like i said the uh the environmental factors of uh the dragon slayer's moveset but now there's even fewer places to call safe now, I will say, however, is that I've never really had to struggle with this. I beat the Slayer the very first time I fought it. But it is very, very um, particular. If you're not familiar with these sorts of games, then it can be a tremendous challenge, all things considered. But trust me, if, if, you, can, if you can get positioning and uh, advantage uh, in, when this does happen in your favor during this fight you won't have any issues with the armor. But, it, it, and bear in mind, again, this is like quite late on into the game as well. So this is where they throw one bigger challenge after another because immediately after this is when you enter the Grand, the grand Archives before you get uh, to uh, Lothric and Lorien at the very top of the tower. Again, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure what else I meant to say because the the only well, I suppose the only other things I should say is that the only reason why it's just the pro the only real problem is that uh, maybe the fight uh, lacks like maybe an X factor uh, in in some cases like 
I don't know, maybe they could have done a thing where at the like at the end when you defeat this the armor, his armor sort of like crumbles and it reveals like someone underneath who just uh, collapses dead. And I don't know, maybe there is a maybe there's just something to say about how maybe like the immediate shift uh, between stages is a bit too um sudden because it, it almost becomes a, a a different boss you're a different monster you're fighting altogether because well that's only due to the influence of the butterflies that come into this fight the the armor doesn't really gain any new moves uh, once uh, the second stage begins and well I do have to say it's, but once you actually fight this thing, you you just it's it's it is it, it's why it's always been difficult when I'm trying to do these videos is to actually sort of convey to you guys how exciting and how challenging and how absolute fighting uh, things in Dark Souls Three can be sometimes because trust me, it's easily what it's one of those things you just have to uh, try for yourself and see how you like it. And with all that being said and done, I hope all of you guys enjoy this reaction to the Dragon Slayer Armor OST in Dark Souls 3, and I'll see all of you guys again in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye for now.